So here, this is our home page. Um, I am going to just go over to about. So despite our name change, um, we are still a watershed organization. Our mission has not changed. And um, what it means to be a watershed organization is that we work to protect the land and waterways in the Wissahickon watershed. What is a watershed, you might be asking yourself. It's a lot of people ask us that question, and it's a very reasonable question. A watershed is essentially all the land area that drains into a particular water body. So for us, it's the Wissahickon Creek. The Wissahickon watershed is our geographic scope. In this map of the Wissahickon watershed on your screen, everywhere that's shaded in, that's part of the watershed. And so again, when it rains, if water, I'm gonna change my pointer real quick to be more visible. Okay. So if water lands, if it rains here in um, Upper Gwynedd, that water will hit the ground and it'll either run across the surface of the ground to the nearest, you know, it follows gravity, it goes downhill, even if it's a very gradual downhill. And it'll, the water will ultimately end up in the Wissahickon Creek, anywhere it's shaded, whether the water is above ground or below ground. That's where it's, that's where it's headed. It follows the Wissahickon Creek south um, to into Philadelphia, and then the, the Wissahickon connects with the Schuylkill River, and that's where the Wissahickon ends. And then the Schuylkill River drains into the Delaware River, um, and then it hits the ocean in the Delaware Bay. So that is our geographic scope, the Wissahickon watershed, and that's what a watershed is. Uh, everybody lives in a watershed. Um, now, the Philadelphia portion of the Wissahickon watershed, the boundaries right here, our partners at Friends of the Wissahickon, they, they are stewards of um, the Wissahickon Park and the portion of the watershed that's in Philadelphia. Wissahickon Trails, we work in the Montgomery County portion of the watershed, which is about two thirds of the watershed. So, this is all our domain up here. So our mission is to protect, steward, and enjoy the land and waterways in the Wissahickon watershed, and we invite you to join us in that effort. Um, so I'm going to take you back to our home page. Again, when you come here, first thing we want you to think about is how do you want to engage with nature? You can work with us to preserve land, explore our water initiative, our land initiatives, we protect open space, we preserve, uh, we improve habitats, um, and we monitor wildlife on our 12 nature preserves. We protect water. You may want to be involved in helping to protect the health of w the Wissahickon Creek and its tributaries, and you can help us with our um, water initiatives. Or you may want to um, get involved with us to enjoy the outdoors and the natural assets that we have in our watershed. Um, and we, we want to enjoy it with you. And so you can check out our upcoming events. Um, you can also um, find these initiatives uh, here under initiatives on the top menu. Um, and I'm just going to show you real quick our land initiatives. Um, you know, the health and protection of the Wissahickon Creek has been central to our mission um, since our founding in 1957. And we protect open space. We do that in partnership with residents, with the county, with our local municipalities, and sometimes with the state. Habitat improvement. We have 12 nature preserves um, that we've protected in perpetuity. And um, on each of those preserves, we actively work to improve the habitats um, and the health of those preserves uh, through active management. And um, you know, this is important because before, you know, in the, before this, the watershed was developed in the 60s and 70s and 80s, it was largely agricultural. Some of you might remember um, living here where the neighborhoods looked very different because they were farm fields or, um, 
horse, you know, equestrian um, facilities and, and other types of agriculture. Um, but so what that means is when we get a piece of land, oftentimes it's because of its agricultural history, it's often um, ecologically degraded. And there's a lot that we can do to make that space have more value in terms of resources for local wildlife. And that's important when there's, when you, in a region um, where, you know, more than 60% of the land cover is residential, um, and there's not a lot of open space. You want that open space that's remaining to be a very high value and quality to local wildlife. It's better for them, it's better for us. So we work to improve habitats and we, um, then we monitor wildlife on our preserves to see how we're doing. So we wanna know if we're making these investments in habitat improvement projects, what is, how is that actually impacting local wildlife um, populations? And so we, in partnership with several other um, conservation organizations, we do a lot of wildlife monitoring and we invite residents to help us with that. We have our citizen science program um, where people can come and get involved in our wildlife monitoring. For example, this is Connor Bergson Conklin. He is one of our um, salamander monitors and he monitors the salamander populations in one of our preserves. And here's what he had to say, you know, about why he thinks it's important to get involved. Um, so that's our land initiatives. Okay, water, you know, we recognize that land and water are intricately connected and we um, have our water stewardship programs protect the 116 stream miles in the watershed. Um, we're part of a four state initiative called the Delaware River Watershed Initiative. You can learn more about that on our website here. You can visit the Delaware River Watershed Initiative um, website. Here if you want to learn more. We've been monitoring the health of the stream for more than 10 years and we do this again in partnership with residents who um, volunteer to be our eyes and ears on the ground monitoring stretches of stream miles for us. You can learn more about the Creek Watch program from there. And then we're involved in the Wissick and Clean Water Partnership. There are 99% of the watershed sits in 13 different municipalities. And um, that can make it very difficult to manage the health of a stream that passes through all those municipalities because each municipality does things a little differently. Um, but what we have been able to do in the Wissahickon um, recently is get those 13 municipalities and four wastewater treatment plants uh, whose effluent goes into the Wissahickon Creek to come together and collaborate on a shared water quality improvement plan for the Wissahickon. And that has um, just was drafted uh, last fall and is currently being reviewed by uh, EPA and the State Department of Environmental Protection. And this is a really significant um, step in the right direction uh, for, the, for improving the health of the Wissahickon Creek. So you can learn more about that initiative on this link and, you know, please if you thank your municipal officials for being involved because this is something, uh, it's good for them to hear from residents that, that you value um, this effort and this initiative. So there's a, you can follow that link and learn how to thank, how and where to thank your municipal folks. And then the last key part of who we are is our engagement initiatives and you know, as I said before, we believe that conservation requires a community. Wissick and Trails can't do it by ourselves. We can only do it in partnership with you. Um, and so we have some uh, programs where we are encouraging community members to get involved in our work. Our citizen science program that I've mentioned is a great way. It's good for families. It's good for adults. It's good for, there's a program in there for everyone. Um, and you can get involved and help us collect important data that we need to understand how our habitat improvement projects are uh, impacting local wildlife communities. So you can, it's a link for getting involved there. 
quick watch, same type of thing, except um, you're monitoring a stretch, uh, a stream stretch on a monthly basis. You're going out and um, you know, looking at some site conditions like algae and erosion, um, any hazards along the stream, and uh, reporting any pollution incidents. And I, I can tell you, in the last um, five or six years, our creek watchers have reported five different pollution incidents that we never would have known about if it hadn't, because we can't be everywhere, the staff. Um, those five pollution incidents you know, were re reported to the appropriate authorities and were you know, uh, mitigated and managed um, as a result of our creek watchers you know, seeing them and reporting them. So that's a really important program. You can get involved, learn how to get involved by, with that link. You can learn more about it on our Creek Watch blog. Conservation Crew is an, a volunteer program for people who are interested in very hands-on um, projects. So helping us with our habitat improvement projects, tree planting, vegetation planting, invasive species removal, and trail projects, helping us uh, improve uh, the quality of the trails. So if you're interested in that kind of work, you can click here to figure out, learn how to join that program. And then we offer environmental education programs for students. And um, we work with nine local schools um, and we offer them programs in the fall, programs in the spring, um, and the programs, the field day, there's two classroom days and a field day each season and the field day is really staffed um, by a lot of volunteers. And so if you're interested in um, environmental education with youth, that's an opportunity. This is a testimonial from a parent of one of the kids who was participated in our environmental education program in the Wissahickon School District. So I did want to, I know everybody's, oh, I gotta admit this person. I know everybody's interested uh, in the trail finder, we will get there, but I did did want to show you um, a little bit, take a little bit of time to tell you, especially those who are new to us, a little bit about who we are and what we do. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the home page. So here, I just want to highlight, um, we, we pay attention to the impacts of our work. Um, you know, I'm really impressed by our community who have contributed 5,600 hours um, towards stewardship projects, trail improvement projects, citizen science and Creek Watch programs just last year in 2019. We um, engaged 2,000 local school students in our environmental education programs last year. We've protected nearly 1,300 acres of open space from development and 3.4 million gallons of stormwater are managed um, by our green stormwater projects every year. And that number will continue to grow. So we're doing a lot in partnership with the communities to make our region you know, a better place to live for everyone, for people and for wildlife. And if, that, if you care about that and you're interested in supporting our work, um, you can go right online and um, pro, you know, provide a financial contribution if it's within your um, capabilities. We are a 501c3 nonprofit and we depend entirely on the generosity of our supporters, um, individuals, foundations, and corporate sponsors. So there's information here on how to um, make, a, make a financial contribution. You know, our preserves and trails are free and open to the public, but maintaining them comes with a price tag. And um, so there's some information on here on how to make a gift. You can join our monthly donor program or make a one-time donation. There's information on planned giving. I love this picture. This is probably my favorite picture on the whole website because he's a bluebird with a comb over. It's not something you see every day. <laughs> um, and then of course, if you have a business or you, the company you work for, if you know they have a sponsorship program, we have some really great sponsorship opportunities and we'd be thrilled if you made an introduction for us. 
Okay, so we're gonna go back to the home page. We have events um, that you can also go to the full list of events up on the upper toolbar menu. Um, but here we have a little highlight of what's upcoming. Of course, in this COVID-19 reality, we've shifted everything to virtual and, and the number of programs and opportunities we offer have radically reduced. In a normal year, we offer about 60 programs um, and events a year. Um, this year, it's, you know, it's just a different, it's a different reality, but we do have some great virtual opportunities coming up and um, you can find them on our website. Okay, so the last two sections are the ones you guys are most interested in. There's Explore the Watershed and the Trail Finder tool, and there's the Take Action section. So this is the area where we really wanted to add value for community members by making it easy for them to figure out how they can contribute to our mission by getting involved in our work, but also through what they can do in their own everyday life. Um, so we have our volunteer opportunities there. I won't go through those because I've already covered a lot of it, but there, this is where essentially all those buttons you saw that said, where I said, you can learn more about becoming a creek watcher here. They all lead you to this volunteer page. Take action at home. So right, we have our 1300 acres and our 12 preserves that we're, where we're managing habitat um, for, for the benefit of wildlife and people. But you can do things, if you own a property that has a yard, there are things that you can do um, with that property to, to support wildlife. And so we've outlined some of those things. I won't go through them in any detail, but this is where you can go. There's resources, so for example, with native plants, where you can buy native plants, um, how to make your home safe for birds. You know, birds fly into windows and that kills a lot of birds. So how do you reduce um, window strikes in your home? Managing stormwater on your property. This is a big one. Um, so there's some resources there. You know, the most impactful, if it's done right, way to manage stormwater on your property is with a rain garden. Um, so we have some resources about rain gardens, yard care strategies, so things you can do in your yard um, to support the health of the Wissick and Creek. I mean, the stormwater, rain garden, and some of the yard care and driveway strategies really is about protecting the Wissick and Creek because one thing you may or may not know is that your storm drains in your neighborhood they they take the stormwater off your roof and what runs off your yard, you know, or off your driveway and goes into the storm drain. And it basically is piped directly to the Wissahickon Creek or to one of its tributaries, which puts it in the Wissahickon Creek. And so any pollutants that that stormwater picks up as it runs across your lawn or your driveway um, or your roof or, or the road ends up in the Wissahickon. Um, and then of course, all that volume of water, you know, stuff that would is not percolating into the ground on your property, but is just getting funneled to the um, storm drain. It creates an enormous amount volume of water in a short period of time, and uh, that scours the stream bed um, and disrupts the ecosystem there. And then, of course, it can create it creates flooding. So, stormwater on your property is a um, Anything you can do is win-win. And then some information on being a nature-friendly pet owner. And then the last section is report an issue. Um, sometimes when you're out on the trail, you see things. Uh, you might see injured or orphaned wildlife, a rabid animal, a, a dead deer, um, a, 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 a tree that's crossed the, uh, fallen across the trail. And so this site, this page deals with all those issues that you might encounter and feel like, I wanna do something about this, but I don't know what to do. Uh, you can go to the, um, this page, the report and issue page, and it will tell you exactly what to do in each of those 
instances, orphaned wildlife injured, orphaned wildlife rabbit animal, dead or road killed deer, a water pollution incident. Um, sometimes you see people dumping things in storm drains, emptying their pool into a storm drain. That one's kind of more common. Um, or, um, you know, sometimes you see development um, with construction. There can be things that you notice. Anyways, you, if you see anything like that, you can go to this page and it'll tell you who to call, including us. We want to know about those things. Illegal hunting, trapping, or dumping, and the fallen tree. So lots of resources to help you, to enable you to take action on behalf of the environment you care about. Okay, and here we are, explore the watershed, find your trail. Um, we're gonna go back to, we're gonna start on the homepage with the map, the trail finder tool with the map. We're gonna spend some time with that. The other pages we're gonna talk about, we have itineraries and we have a page that um, highlights points of interest. So if you're looking for a destination, this is a place to go to find one. Um, I do want to start with the before you go page because there's some important information on here. First and foremost, how to be safe on the trails um, during this pandemic. You know, it's uh, wearing a mask. Uh, I don't go on the trails anymore without a mask. Maintaining social distance, so making sure that you have six feet between you um, and other trail users. And if you can't maintain that, then that means it's time to get off the trail. It's too crowded. Um, visit on your own or with like one other person whom you live with. Um, you know, small groups, it makes it harder to get that six feet if you have a group of even four people on the trail. Um, Bring hand sanitizer. There's no place to wash your hands on the trail. And sometimes you do touch, you know, bridges and um, other amenities that are on the trails. If you think you might be sick, stay home. I mean, that goes with, that's common sense. And um, please make sure if you use a mask and if you use gloves, you throw them in a waste receptacle. We've been finding actually a bunch of um, discarded gloves and uh, masks on the ground, like in the parking lot of some of our trails. Um, so please, uh, you know, pack that stuff out and throw it away in a garbage can. Um, keep your dogs on a leash and clean up after your dogs. Those are, those are always the rules on the trail, but when you have more people, um, when people break those rules, it has more of an impact. Um, and also make sure you stay on the trail because uh, some of our trails are right adjacent to private property. And uh, if you go off the trail, you end up in someone's, on someone's private property. Um, and we, we wanna minimize that because you know, we wanna stay on good terms with our neighbors. Uh, okay, trail ratings are on this page. So when we use the trail finder tool, you can filter by, um, a trail rating, easy or moderate. So this is the definition of what an easy trail is. It's mainly flat, dirt, mowed grass. Sometimes it's, um, we have a few paved trails, so that would be an easy, um, and it's generally suitable for most walkers and hiders, hikers. The moderate trails, um, we have more of those, and they're, you know, the dirt, the narrow dirt trails that tend to have, you know, roots and rocks and things sticking out of them, they're not very level um, or flat surfaces. Um, sometimes we have steep sections, sometimes there's steps or ladders, and in some trails there's stepping stones, and those are usually marked so you know. Stepping stones get you across the, a stream. Uh, we don't have any trails that we would call particularly challenging. So we just have easy and moderate. Um, there's a list of what you can do on the trails, and there's a list of prohibited activities on the trails. And the one thing I, I only one thing I'm going to talk about here is biking, because this is probably the most misunderstood of our um, prohibited activities. The vast majority of our trails do not permit mountain biking. And the reason is um, that they weren't uh, the trails were not designed with mountain biking in mind and multi-use, so they they don't have the appropriate 
sight lines for safe multi-use, multi-trail use. So for example, if you have pedestrians and bikers, people on bikes, you, know, you can't have blind turns or you'll have an accident where a biker runs into a pedestrian. Um, you need to have good long sight lines so that the cyclist who's moving fast can slow down and moderate their speed um, when they see a person coming. If they don't see a person or they can't see the person walking, then they can't accommodate for them and that's dangerous. And our trails, the vast majority of our trails do not have those sight lines. Um, we think bike, you know, mountain biking is great. Um, I bike on trails. I just bike on trails where you're allowed to bike. I tend to bike in Fort Washington. Because we think bike trail riding is um, so much fun, we have included a list of places where you can um, bike on the trails. So it's Fort Washington State Park. We have two trails um, where you can bike, three trails actually, Crossways, Jodsworth Run, um, and I be, believe Pizak, although it's not listed here, um, you can bike on Pizak. Forbidden Drive, that's in Wissahickon Park, you can bike there. The 202 Parkway Trail allows biking. And if you really like want to bike a distance, check out the Circuit Trails website. Um, it's a five county, two state trail network in Greater Philadelphia where you can do some really great um, cycling. Okay, so that's all I'm going to say about that. Now we're going to go back to the web page to the trail finder tool. Okay, so let me take a moment to orient you here. On the map, right now the map shows all of our preserves and trails. If you look down, there's a key, so you know what each of these different uh, symbols and colors represent. So the brown squares are the preserve names. So if you click on the brown square, It'll tell you the name of the preserve, how big it is, what township it is, and a link to the trail page or the preserve page tells you all about more details about the preserve. The a blue circle is uh, parking. It shows you where there are parking lots or allowed parking areas. The white circle is uh, for restrooms. There aren't a ton. I think there are like one, two, three, maybe four um, preserves that have restroom access. Um, and that includes Fort Washington State Park. And then the green circles are points of interest. And if you look, um, our northernmost preserves preserve is Dodsworth. It's called Dodsworth Run. It's in North Wales. Um, and our southernmost preserve is Pizek Preserve, which is in Springfield and Upper Dublin townships. Um, and then the Green Ribbon Trail, or the Green Ribbon Preserve as we call it, uh, starts in North Wales at Parkside Place up here. And it basically follows the Wasikin Creek all the way through the watershed, um, through Fort Washington State Park, and it, right now it ends at Stenton Ave. Um, and the county, I'm super thrilled to share, uh, they are this close to starting construction, you know, then COVID-19 hit, but um, on a trail extension that will connect from Stenton Ave, where the Green Ribbon ends, and connect it to Wissickon Park so that you can get all the way to Wissicum Park safely. Um, so that uh, you know, should be built, I'm gonna say conservatively, within the next two years. Um, so that's exciting. Okay, I saw uh, a hand. Yep. Yes, okay. <laughs> uh, we have a hand from Brian. Do you have a question? Yeah, sorry, just had to unmute myself there. Um, yeah. This map is wonderful. It's just, I've been uh, using it a lot. What, uh, what I'd like to see though is, um, we were at one of the preserves, maybe it, was, maybe it was Dodsworth, and there was a printed map of the Green Ribbon Trail. Mm -hmm. But on the map itself, it had the names, um, 
with little dots pointing to the icon um, on the map. Um, so you didn't have to guess which one you were clicking on. So um, like your hand, if mm -hmm. you move your cursor to like Pen Lin, the little hand, move it closer to, I oh, know no, uh, oh, no, I'm gonna just zoom in a little cause some of oh, them okay. it's, um, if there's a lot of dots on a small, you know, relatively small preserve, it can be tough to click the one you want. Um, actually, Pen Lin. If you're at, if you're at Pen Lin, you can see Pen Lin. Oh, now you're at, uh, yeah, so you're at Worcester Woods Pen Lin. It would be nice rather than having to click to see the name of it, have that um, in some typeface um, similar, similar similar inside to either Worcester Woods mm -hmm. or, or Penlin, just like the physical map that was posted at um, Green Ribbon. I mean, it might add to a little clutter, but um, it would be nice to see the names of the preserves on the initial map face. Right. When you click on it, maybe you could, you can include a link for the, the, whole tra the whole preserve page, but you might want to just put an address if someone doesn't want to um, actually visit the trails page, but just wants uh, wants to know where to hook up with it. Right. This is a question. Yeah, and um, Maddie, do you remember, I remember we talked about this. Do you remember what the reason why we didn't have the names listed? I think, I don't recall exactly, but I know it was um, like a capability, uh, issue with with the web developer um it was also sort of i think partially to declutter um instead of having everything sort of up all the time but i could look into it for sure yeah i mean i definitely i i think right there is value in seeing the names of the preserve without having to click and sometimes one of the bugs we're still trying to work out is sometimes when you click on the square it's just a few of them uh, it can't distinguish between like the preserve, so like Penlin, um, from Green Ribbon Trail. And um, look, so a, a good example of that is um, Four Mills. It's right now, wherever you click, it says Green Ribbon Preserve, because for the Green Ribbon Trail goes through Four Mills. Um, but if you want the Four Mills icon to come up, oh, there it is. It's just tough to make it you have to like hit it in just the right spot. So we are still working on some, some uh, improving the functionality of this in, in a few air, a few ways. Great, it really is beautiful and wonderful. Well, thank you. And it's um, definitely um, a great, it's very, it's a, a way step ahead from, from where we were. Um, so a couple of things I wanna show you uh, you know, you can zoom in pretty, pretty close. And um, so if you want to figure out how do I get from my house to the nearest preserve, you know, all the most of the streets show up and you can really um, sort of get your geographic bearings. Um, the other thing I want to show you is, let's see, the preserve pages. Let's see if I can actually know what I'm going to do. Um, Okay, so four Mills Nature Reserve, 61.4 acres in Upper Dublin and White Marsh Township. And then the trail page, if you go to the trail page, it opens in a new window and it gives you more information where the trailhead is, how long the trail is, uh, difficulty level, and what amenities are there. And then if you scroll down, there's a, you know, more information about the preserve, what you'll find there, um, and the different trails. Um, at the bottom of every trail page, there's a sort of a box with, you know, more information. This one, it's uh, what you might see on other trail pages. It might be the trail history, the preserve history. Um, it varies a little bit. And then on the right, there's some more information, you know, where to park, public transit, how to get there by public transit, 
uh, Google Map directions, and then the before you go rules and general information. And then the other thing that each trail page will have is a trail map. And this is something um, we've been working on, you know, prior to now. We had only had a trail map really for the whole Green Ribbon Trail, but we didn't have maps for each of our preserves. Um, and so now we did a campaign, a crowdfunding campaign, and we raised the funds and we're in the process of creating preserve maps, trail maps for each of our preserves. And the first one that we have complete is for mills. Um, so I wanted to show you that. The rest of them will be done um, in the early summer. This one's ready, so I wanted to just give you a sneak peek of our preserve maps. These will be printable on eight and a half by 11 paper. They'll be up in the kiosk of, you know, if the preserve has a kiosk, it'll also be posted and available there. Um, and the trail map gives you some additional information that you can't get on the map um, on the home page. So for example, it shows you specifically how many trails are on the preserve. So on Four Mills, there's the Green Ribbon Trail comes through Four Mills. Right here, it's the dark green dashes. And then there's the Rotary Trail, which goes on the back side of the preserve, um, closer to the, if you're from Ambler, you know, the Ambler piles, which are here. And so you can see, you know, you could map out your hike. There's a little spur here. Um, and you can see exactly, you know, where you might want to connect and go on the preserve. It also, this gives you more detailed information, I mean, uh, about, you know, other amenities. So where, where are the benches? If you look on the legend, there's a little bench icon. So you can see, oh yeah, there's a bench here, there's a bench here, um, and there's a bench up here. Um, it points out the stepping stone crossing is number six, and that's right here. And also there's an icon for trail entrances. So you can see, you know, if there's more than one place to enter the preserve that will be identified on the trail map. So at Four Mills, you can come in from Church Street in Ambler uh, and get on the Rotary Trail. You can come in, um, this is Butler, Butler Pike, right? Right before, if you're coming from Morris Road, which is here, you turn right on Butler. Um, the trail is just before the bridge over the Wissahickon. And um, so you can enter there. Uh, you can enter at the Four Mills Barn. Here's our headquarters. There's parking there and um, bridge, two bridges across over the Wissahickon to get you to the trail. And, the, and then there's another trail entrance um, on Morris Road, just across from Germantown Academy. So this shows you, you know, there's more information on the trail maps. There's some topography, um, does include local streets, so you can sort of orient yourself better to where, um, especially to the entrances. Um, so we're super excited to have one of these for each of our preserves, um, and the rest will be coming soon. They're in development right now. Okay, so we're gonna go back to the home page and I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to clear it. Now, one of, if you look on the left, there's the find your trail um, menu and there's all these different things you can filter the, the map by, the data populating the map. So there's amenities, there's the trail difficulty, and there's trail length, long, medium, and short. It's just off my. Um, and the thing to know about when you filter uh, is that for every thing you click, um, it is go only going to show you the preserves that have all of whatever's clicked. So if you start by clicking, um, let's say along water. So now it's only showing the um, preserves and trails that are have a water feature or are along water. Then you're like, well, I also wanna see um, hard trail surfaces. 
So then it's only going to show you the preserves that have both hard trail surfaces and are along water. Um, so that's just important to bear in mind that it's, it's additive, the filters. Hold on. Okay. Um, and then when you want to change the filters, um, rather than just unclicking, what happens if you unclick them is then you end up with nothing uh, in the map. You have to hit clear to sort of repopulate the map with all of the data every time you, you filter. Um, so let's, are there any questions at this point? I see, um, I thought I saw some chats. had a few chats, but they weren't um, questions. Kevin okay. said, you know, everything looks, I can read the compliments, but Kevin <laughs> said, everything looks amazing. Nice work. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. So. Okay. Um, so, so let's see, what should I, let's say, let's look for preserves that have picnic areas or benches. So one of the, um, so there's, uh, this is Willow Lake. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Oh, no, this is Briar Hill. Oh, no, it is Willow Lake, sorry. Willow Lake. Um, we just had a quick question come in from Chris Rains. Yes. Uh, are all of the areas open during the quarantine? Uh, yes, so all of the areas are open. There are, um, there's one trail that we've closed at Crossways, um, or we're closing. I don't know if we've officially announced it yet, Maddie, but we are closing it. But the rest of Crossways is open, and it's just a little trail that runs along our neighbor's property. And uh, it's just not well marked enough, and people have been getting confused and going off the trail into their property. So until we can fix the signage, we thought, let's just close that spur um, and keep people on the main trails. But by and large, yes, everything is open, I'm happy to say. Um, and we are, staff are monitoring the trails for safety during um, the stay at home order. So that we have Montgomery County staff going out on a, every two weeks, People are assigned to stretch a trail just to walk it and you know look for any hazards and make sure um, there isn't anything that needs to be fixed or repaired because um, we want to make sure as long as the trails are open that you know they're being uh, managed for safety. Um, so we are we are doing that as well. Okay, so you get the idea of the filter by and. Um, and you really can do a lot with the map. And there's also a satellite view um, that you can use if you wanna see, you know, it gives you a, a sort of a more detailed sense of what's forested, what's not forested, you know, how close is this to a highly developed area? It's, it, I think it's just interesting. Um, so that's that button there. The next place I wanna take you to is the, in the, Explore your watershed drop down menu. There's also a find your trail um, tab. Click that. And this is a different way of filtering information. So on this page, it lists all of our preserves, right? It's on two pages. And, um, and you can filter the list by the same thing. So you can filter by trail length, you can filter by difficulty level and you can filter by amenities. And so say you pick, I wanna go to a birding hotspot, um, you go down and uh, Willow Lake Farm shows up and oh, I'm surprised. Um, there we go. These are the birding hotspots. Um, in a list rather than in a map format. Um, so you can do that with any of the filtering uh, features. It's just another way to take the information. You can also see at a glance 
you know, where the trailhead is, how long the trail is, its difficulty level, and what amenities it has. So this is more like at a glance um, preserve and trail information. And then the next thing, if you are looking for somewhere new, like, like most of us, we have our few trails that we go to all the time and that we love. And you know, maybe you're thinking, I'd like to try something new, I just don't know where to go and what to do. Um, our staff, who spends a lot of time on the trails, have drafted some itineraries to share. And so um, that some of their favorite spots to spend time. And up here at the top, this is the index, so you can see them all at a glance. And then you can just click on it, and it'll take you to that itinerary. So Margaret Rohde, our conservation manager, drafted a crossways hike itinerary. And it, you know, it tells you what, what it's good for, when it's best to go, and then there's sort of step-by-step step step instructions um, for the hike. And we have one, you know, this is our, one of our office dogs, a beloved office dog, Nellie. Um, and she has an itinerary for a dog walk from Four Mills Barn. She walks there, uh, well, before COVID on a daily basis. Um, so that, that itinerary is here. Dodsworth Run, our senior naturalist drafted an itinerary. Uh, she tells you some things to do and what to look for. Our director of en engagement has a choose your own adventure for families an itinerary. Um, Willow Lake Farm, uh, our very own Maddie Neff, who's on the call, uh, has her itinerary of what she likes to do and see when she hikes at Willow Lake. So this is just a nice feature um, to help you know people diversify and mix it up when they're wanting to go explore somewhere in the watershed. We wanna help you find new places. And then the last piece of this is, uh, are the points of interest. So if you're looking for a destination, um, you can check out the points of interest and see what you have, have seen and have not seen before. So again, this is the index at the top and you can click on whichever one you're interested in or you can just scroll down. We, for those of you who don't know, we own and operate a, um, a working grist mill from the 17 and 1800s. It's called the Evans Mumbara Mill. It's in Lower Gwynedd um, and we open it for a monthly open house um, where we run it and do a demonstration of how it works for the public. Um, you know, now with COVID, we're not doing that right now, but you still can hike by and check it out from the outside. It's a really cool um, historic building. Uh, and when we do open back up, I encourage you to come to one of the open houses. It's really, uh, it's really pretty awesome. So there's information about that. We have, um, you know, we have a bunch of stepping stone, eight stepping stone crossings throughout the Green Ribbon Trail. Um, and they make it easier to keep your feet dry while you're crossing the creek um, and, and make new trail connections. They're kind of uh, an icon on the Green Ribbon Trail. So if you wanted to check those out, um, there's information on how to find the stepping stone crossings. Uh, in Along the Green Ribbon Trail, there's a place we call King's Woods. And there's, some of you may have seen it. There's this old fireplace and foundation right next to the creek. Um, and it's a neat uh, historic uh, remnant of, uh, a, 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 what did they call it? Um, I wanna say a skate shack, but it's where locals would come and they'd skate on the river and then they'd come inside the shack and warm up and have hot chocolate. and. You know, I wish we could still use it that way today, but uh, the river doesn't, the stream doesn't really freeze. <laughs> um, but it's a really cool historic um, artifact that you can find along the Green Ribbon Trail. So this tells you how to get there and what to look for. We have a bird uh, observation deck at Dodsworth Preserve. So it's a great place um, to go check out. There's information about that. And some of you have asked about the Wissahickon Waterfowl Preserve. Um, and this is, um, this is a birding hotspot. I mean, people see birds at the Waterfowl Preserve, especially during migration, that they don't see anywhere else locally. This is an ambler. Uh, since some of you asked about it, I will take you back to the map and show you where it is. 
but there's some information here, when to go, uh, where it is, that kind of thing. That's, oh, um, so I will, I'm gonna take you back to the map real quick and just show you where it is. So if you've seen our headquarters, the Four Mills Barn, that's here. This is Morris Road, Butler Pike going into Ambler. If you go into Ambler uh, on Butler Pike from Morris Road, you take a left on, um, what is the name of that road? Maple Street and before the train tracks. And uh, the Waterfall Preserve is on the left. And for those of you who know Ambler's history, um, this Waterfall Preserve is part of uh, the asbestos um, piles remediation. So um, this is basically taking a, a toxic waste site and turning it into um, you know, a, a really important migratory stopover space for um, for birds. So you can park right on Maple Street. It is fenced in. You can't go in to the pond. Um, you can only view it from outside the steel the fence. Um, so just FYI, I don't want anybody to be surprised. Um, but it's a cool place to go. And if you track, you know, if you're if you track bird sightings. Um, then you can find out when to go see something cool. I'm gonna take you back, we're almost done, to the points of interest and just, um, there were two more. Four Mills Barn, these are, this is our headquarters. Um, so this is, uh, was a barn as part of a huge estate um, that was designed by Horace Trumbauer, who also designed uh, the Great Towers Castle at Arcadia, Keswick Theater, Free Library of Philadelphia, Erdenheim Farm. He designed their um, stables. Um, so anyways, it's a, it's a really cool historic building um, and you can come check it out when everything's opened back up again. You know, we're there from eight to four and people can come visit. So there's information there. And then the last thing was, you may drive around and notice, uh, so for example, at Crossways or Doddsworth or this, what looks like a chimney in the middle of a field. And it is it is replicating a chimney. It's for chimney swifts who roost in chimney-like structures. They like to be inside, um, you know, in a natural environment, it would be a, a dead tree or people call a snag. They'd roost down inside of it where it's um, rotted from the inside. Um, but the, you know, with development and everything, there aren't a lot of snags around anymore. So the chimney swift started roosting in chimneys, but then everybody started capping their chimneys for good reason, but that sort of pushed the chimney swift out of their uh, habitat for roosting and nesting. And so um, conservation organizations like us are building these chimney swift towers so that um, the chimney swifts have a place to roost and nest. So we, we have four of those out in the watershed um, and you can find them on the map and because uh, they're one of the um, points of interest and go check them out. Okay. Let me go back to the home page. So that was a lot. Um, I welcome your questions. I'm pretty much done with the tour. Um, if you have any other questions or if you want me to, if you have questions about how to use the map, um, you know, I'm all ears. You can either, you know, raise your hand or put it in chat. Um, but I hope that this tour is helpful in, in connecting you to resources that can help you explore our wonderful um, nature preserves and uh, you know, participate in our mission to protect, steward, and enjoy our land and waterways in the Wissickum watershed.